what we need to do is we need to start realizing how people make decisions. Hello, I've got Ken McLaughlin with me again. Welcome back, Ken. Thanks, John. Nice to be here. Hey, Ken, you, you do a, a, you know, we've talked about it before, a lot of work in win-loss analysis, and you talk to customers all the time about how and why they made decisions. Yeah. And you've learned a lot from that, and you've shared some of that in the past. Yes. But we've just had an offline discussion about, a little bit about right brain, left brain, etc. Can you share some of your findings in that area? Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um, you know, when I sit down and talk to senior decision makers, initially when I started to do that, I, I had a sense they'd talk about a particular vendor and their product set and the price point, etc. Yeah, and occasionally that gets a mention, but it's, it's very rare that that actually is the deciding factor in, in many of these strategic decisions. Often what they talk about is the connection they felt with the salesperson or the sales team um, and their ability to, you know, create credibility and authority. Mm -hmm. And when you drill on that, it's really, really interesting. In what way? Well, so, it, it, you know, we, what we tend to do is we default to our standard pitch and here's our features and here's our functions and this is, you know, hopefully what you'll find interesting and this is how it relates to your problem. But actually that doesn't really have the ability to, to engage an audience. What we need to do is we need to start realizing how people make decisions. And what we usually do is we use the right brain feeling part of our um, psyche um, to to make a decision, and then we yeah. justify it with the left brain, with the rational, you know, information, uh, you know, common sense approach. And that's being human, isn't it? We all like that. That's part of Some our DNA. More than, more than less, obviously. But Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, the interesting thing is, what we tend to do in the sales industry, for whatever reason, is we tend to try and appeal to the left brain, rational. Here's the information. Now you can make a decision. But all that really does is tick a box, because invariably there might be four or five or six solutions that, broadly speaking, can do it. So then you've got an apples for apples comparison. Now the question becomes, well, what else have you got? Why why would we engage with you? So have you got any case studies in mind where the customer has actually talked about how? probably not in those terms, but how these people appealed to my right brain versus left brain, etc. Yeah, I, I, there's been many, many instances where they say, you know, we, we liked them, we felt there was a strong connection, you know, we got them, or they got us, in fact, they spoke our language, etc. But what they're really saying is this, this salesperson or these individuals came in and they spoke to us about what they were passionate about, what they believed in, what their vision was for our business or for the industry more broadly. And it gave them something to connect with. And as a result of that, it differentiated them from, from the other organizations they were competing with. Now, a really good example, um, I was sitting down with the key decision makers from a customer, and they, they talked about the fact that even though you know they worked in the office, they were mostly a blue-collar workforce. And one of the vendors had come in and said, okay, you've got a lot of people who are out there, and they're getting hot and wet and dusty, and um, you know they're out on the job. So they went and found ruggedized... Um, um, iPad covers mm -hmm. and, and they brought them in they bought some and they said you know could you see yourselves using this out on the job and you know gave it to the guys and, mm -hmm. and that it was just one little thing but what it did was it said it, it spoke volumes about their understanding and the cultural fit and the fact that they actually cared right it was a huge even though it was such a small thing to do it, it had a huge impact on the perception of them and as a result they they went and won a massive massive piece of business uh, when I look at all the really successful salespeople they have a strong human element to them and they really think about the other person and, and, and you know, work out ways in which they can make them feel comfortable and, and f feel, feel enthused about the, what they're doing and so on. I think Absolutely. that's a very valid point. I think, I think with things like empathy and you know, your, your EQ and active listening and the way you use stories to, you know, to communicate your point, all of these things which are maybe you know, soft skills rather than hard sales skills, are incredibly important in terms of actually um, creating that level of connection. I'd probably go as far, as far as saying if you haven't got that, you're not going to sell for it very effectively. No matter how good you are on your product and the, and the value your product brings to the industry you're selling to and so on, if you can't relate on a human level, people are going to have trouble buying from I you. I couldn't agree more. Thank you very much, Kian. Really appreciate your time. Pleasure, John.